So you want to start a podcast, but you're no audio engineer. You're just a person with a great idea and a message to share. Don't worry. Just keep on watching because in today's video, I'm going to share with you three beginner podcast setups that will get you on the road to starting your own show. Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Steckley and here on YouTube, I'll just share all my tips and hacks for social media marketing and content creation. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. I like to upload twice a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Today we've brought out the fancy microphone because we are talking about podcasting. And I'm going to share with you three different microphone setups that you could use for your future podcast, starting from the cheapest slash most accessible, working up to the most expensive, but most high quality setup that I think is reasonable for beginners which I should say, I am also not an audio engineer. I'm just somebody that's been making videos and recording audio for a long time. And so in my experience, these are some good options that are gonna give you good results, but not take like a genius to figure out. So that being said, let's jump into the first option. In the world of YouTube, we like to talk about what is the best camera for making videos. And I always like to say the best camera is the one that you already have. And the same is true for microphones. Most likely you have a pretty high quality microphone already sitting in your back pocket and that is the one attached to your phone. And this is a great place to start. If you are just experimenting with the idea of starting a podcast and you don't wanna invest a lot of money, using your smartphone is a good first option. Here are a couple tips for making the audio on your smartphone sound better or the best that it possibly can be if this is the option that you wanna use. First of all, with any kind of microphone, but especially with one on like an iPhone, you want to be recording in a small and controlled space. Some good options include like your bedroom or maybe even your closet. You want it to be nice and contained so that you don't have a lot of echoes. For instance, my apartment is not an ideal place for recording audio because I have 12 foot ceilings and it's just very, a big open space with not a lot of soft textures. So if you get yourself into a closet with lots of clothes around you, the clothes will naturally muffle the sound. And because it's in a small space, there won't be a lot of room for the audio to echo. If you don't wanna sit in your closet, you could like sit on your couch under a blanket. This is something I've been known to do to make voiceovers. It sounds really silly, but it actually does impact the audio quality a lot. It makes it sound better. Finally, if you are recording with your phone, I would recommend holding it up like this above your mouth. As you can see, uh, that is going to naturally reduce the popping sounds of like a P or the S of an S. So yeah, hold it above your mouth under a blanket or in the closet. That is going to sound best. Now, I know that's not always reasonable, especially if you're trying to do interviews. It's a little weird to be like, hey, come over, be on my podcast. We're just going to go sit in my closet. If you want to avoid that awkwardness, you could look into something like the Rode mic for mobile phones. I will link the Amazon page in the description so you can go check it out. But basically, it's just a little microphone that plugs into the headphone jack of your phone. So iPhone users, you'll have to get out that little dongle thing. <laughs> but basically, this is just a higher quality microphone that is going to help muffle the sounds of echoes and any kind of wind and just make your audio quality better. So you can just plug that in, open up the Voice Notes app and record what you want to record. And then you can import that file onto your computer via Google Drive or AirDrop, uh, whatever you prefer. All right, we're moving on up. This is the second option for you starting a podcast, another microphone that I would definitely recommend for beginners. It's gonna be a little bit more high quality and uh, will require a slight bit more of an investment, but you can find very reasonable priced USB microphones that plug directly into your laptop that will sound great for your podcast. It's super easy. All you need to do with these microphones is plug them into your laptop, open up something like QuickTime, or GarageBand or Audacity, and you can record your file directly into that, and with GarageBand or Audacity, you can edit them there, or if you record in QuickTime, send it off to your editor, whatever, who will get it all prepared for upload. I was able to try out this one by a company called Fifine, and they sent it to me to review. This microphone is pretty great for the price point. It's only around $40 Canadian. You can get it in this cute pink color or in black. And I find that the audio quality is pretty good, especially considering how inexpensive it is. You can get very fancy USB microphones up until like the Blue Yeti, like the Snowball. I don't know. There's lots of different um, models that different podcasters prefer, but this is a very reasonable, affordable price for a beginner to get started with. And we're now using it to record the Bossy Women podcast, a podcast that I co-founded with my friend who's also named Katie. I'm doing all the editing for the show and she interviews and records the episodes and it's a super easy 
workflow for her to just record them right into her laptop and then send me the files. So far, I feel like the audio quality of the microphone is pretty good, especially when you sit underneath a blanket. It sounds even better, don't you think? <laughs> really? Agree. <laughs> So especially if you're new to all the techie side of podcasting, then this is a really great option for you to do. It's super plug and play and it's a great price. This was not sponsored by Fifine, but I did get the microphone for free. So thank you for letting me test that out. If you do want to check out that microphone, I will leave a link in the description. All right, it's time to move up to the big guns. The last recommendation I have for you if you are starting out with a podcast and want the best audio quality in a very easy and straightforward workflow, then I would recommend checking out uh, this guy, which I am recording with right now. So I'm gonna talk about this setup, which I've used for clients and um, for my own projects. This is the Zoom H5 recorder, and I have attached to it just a basic XLR microphone. These are from Amazon. This cord is just an Amazon Basics. XLR cord plugged into one of the two inputs for the Zoom H5. This is an amazing setup because one, the audio quality is great. These kind of microphones are gonna produce really good results, especially for like an interview, just recording, talking sort of situation. They're one directional microphones, <laughs> they're unidirectional microphones. So that means that you're not gonna get a lot of background noise. Whereas something like, say for example, if I start using the Rode audio that I've recorded, I've got a Rode mic on top of my camera, you'll hear that there's more background noise. You might hear the street a little more, but when I switch back to this microphone, you really only hear my voice because it's really just pointing towards my mouth. So it's great for interviews. The thing that I love most about this setup is that the Zoom H5 has the potential to have four separate inputs and you can record up to four tracks at a time. The reason this is, is because on the bottom here, you'll see there are two places that you could plug it in, but this top bit here actually is modular and can be taken off and replaced with another extension that allows for two more XLR inputs. So far, I haven't had the need to record four different tracks at a time, but if I was recording for a podcast where um, my client wanted to have three different guests on at once, then this would allow for that. The reason this is so good is because when you get into editing your podcast more in depth, you want to have each individual voice on a separate track so that if something happens, like someone's breathing really heavy into the microphone or sneezes into their microphone, it doesn't ruin the entire section of the podcast. You can just cut out that one section from that one person's track. Or if you have somebody who's really soft-spoken talking with somebody who is a lot louder, then you can turn up the track of that one person. It gives you a lot more flexibility in editing to make sure that the audio level Levels are perfect, which is why it's important to record on multiple tracks. This setup will run you towards like $800 Canadian when you account for buying that Zoom H5 plus all of the cords and the microphones. But if this is something that you really want to invest in, this is going to last you a long time. Whereas if you start with the iPhone, then go to the USB mic, then go to this, you'll end up spending more money upgrading slowly over time than just going straight for this. Though I understand that if you're uncertain about starting a podcast or if you just legit don't have the budget, then the other two options that I mentioned might be better for you. But I would recommend to anybody that I was working with this setup 100% because it just makes the editing more professional and it gives you way more flexibility to recover cover any kind of mistakes that happen while recording. And in terms of the user experience on your end, like say you are recording and then sending it off to an editor, all you have to do is turn this on and make sure that you have the right tracks selected simply by pressing one of these buttons and making sure that the light is next to the input that you want it to be. And then that's it. You just press record and you're ready to go. And then you can just take out the full sized SD card, put it into your computer and send the files off to your editor or you know, import them into your personal favorite audio editing software of choice. In addition to this little setup, if you don't wanna have to have your guests holding a microphone, I also have these mini tripods that come with like a pop filter that you can set up on a desk. And these were like, I think $8 a piece on Amazon. So that's another way that you can kind of add to your setup if you wanna make it really comfortable for any guests that you're having on your podcast. So those are my three podcast microphones that I would recommend to any beginner. In case you're getting started out and you're feeling overwhelmed by this whole process and you don't know how you're gonna edit or publish or create an RSS feed, don't worry, I have you covered. 
If you didn't already know, I offer podcast launching and editing services for a variety of content creators and other clients. Podcasts are such a growing medium, and if you're already thinking about using blog content marketing, then you might wanna consider starting a podcast to reach more people and share your message. And if you want help editing it, please feel free to reach out to me. You can go to my website, I'll link it below, and up here you can go check it out and see more details about my podcast editing packages. I'd love to hear from you and find out how I can help you make your dream come to life. If you wanna see more videos about podcasting, please let me know in the comments below because I have a lot more advice and tips that I would love to share with you. In the meantime though, I tend to make a lot of videos about Instagram and you might wanna check out this one, but before you go watch that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. I try to upload twice a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a single one. As always, I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.